Lunch Money Lambert, Jeff Malott. Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Where we talk about fishing and competition. It's your boy Ox Pippin, aka Ox Fishing. Don't come over here tripping. Hey, hope you enjoy the show. Jeff Malat, Lunch Money Lambert, <laughs> Lego. Hey, welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Welcome to the Welcome to the Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Welcome to the Hey, welcome to the Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Tuesday! Tuesday, you're looking. What's up, everybody? Welcome to KVM Live on a Tuesday. I had to Boy. throw a sketch clip in there for Ryan. Uh, you made it, man. I was worried. Gosh. Uh, I was trying to get a steak. Uh, so I have a steak and uh, some Brussels sprouts and some uh, potatoes sitting next to me that I'm not going to get to eat for a while. So. Okay. Well, feel free to go ahead and eat while we're talking. It no, nah, I'm good. Fine. It'll be fine. We're fine. Where are you at? I am in uh, Bristol, Tennessee. I got a meeting in the morning, so I'm being a responsible adult and uh, up here early. Okay. Well, we got a little bit to talk about tonight. We've got uh, some of the top finishers from the Bassmaster Kayak Series PK event. Ended up being a tough event, weather issues, but overall a great weekend. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, what did you think of the fishing to begin with? I know both of us didn't have the event we wanted. so Buddy, <laughs> uh, the fishing was horrendous. Uh, it was tough pre-fishing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I stumbled up on some post-spawn fish on, uh, on some brush piles and offshore stuff, and I thought that was going to hold up, and I don't know if they got cracked on Saturday in the bass boat tournament or what, but it was, uh, it was slow goings out there. What'd you, what'd you run into? Well, I practiced on Friday. Uh, we launched same spot on, on Friday. At one, at one point when I was practicing, I, it was really clear water over there. I saw some fish up shallow. I didn't really like what I saw there. So I drove around the whole lake, didn't practice anywhere else, but I saw an area on the, I guess it'd be the West side of the lake that I really liked. Uh, I never fished there, but it looked good. So I decided to launch there uh, Sunday morning. Well, it was going to be Saturday morning, ended up being Sunday morning. We'll talk about that. Uh, and just went to the back of these pockets and tried to fish shallow with a buzz bait and catch either spawners or post spawners back there still shallow. And it didn't, didn't quite pan out, man. Everybody in that area seemed to struggle uh, or except our big bass winner, he said the bite was tough, but he did win big bass. He launched with me at the same ramp uh, Sunday morning. So Matt Ramey was with us first. He won big bass with that giant. We'll talk to him about that. And and I'll ask him, we kind of talked about it before we went live, and you probably think the same thing. It seemed like listening to all the anglers, the lake was in like like four different phases, depending on where you're at in the lake. We had spawners, post spawners, people, you know, fishing a funk out, feeding on chat. I mean, it was, it was weird. Yep. Yep, it was definitely a tough tournament fishing wise, but I, honestly, man, I had a blast at Possum Kingdom. The you know the community, the local folks, the Chamber of Commerce, like they are fantastic. I mean, fantastic hosts. All the businesses were you know coming up asking us if we were with the Bassmaster Kayak Series and stuff. Obviously, we jumped in some cornhole tournaments out there, uh, and then you know honestly, Saturday getting canceled is the best day in a tournament I can remember in probably seven or eight years. Like it felt like we just turned the clock back to, you know, where this all started a decade ago. It was so much fun just hanging out with everybody, everybody relaxed, just having a good time playing a little bit of octahole, you know? Yeah. We came up with a new term or I shouldn't say we <laughs> tournament director extraordinaire, Steve Owens came up with a new, <laughs> new term called octahole uh, that involves Four person teams in cornhole, so eight people playing, and it it's now octahole. So it man. was hilarious. Uh, yeah. Of course, the Nebraska guys uh, they came down and dominated uh, at cornhole. <laughs> I don't think they lost one one game to me and Siddiqui like at the very end of the day, and that was the only L they took. I'm pretty sure all day long. So yeah. hats off to those cats. 
They were throwing straight fire, man. Especially it was uh, nasty. Yeah, it they, was they were nasty. good. They you can tell good. they do it pretty often. It was yeah. uh, it was awesome. Hey, J Mac Outdoors, I wish you'd have came up, man. He said he saw me at the board check. He didn't say because I was in a convo. But you should have interrupted. I probably didn't like who I was talking to anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now at, at the check-in, it was great seeing everybody that I haven't seen in a while. Uh, and then I also did meet a few people that I haven't met before that I've known from online stuff. Yeah. Some of the viewers from the shows came up and said something. Uh guy that comments a lot three the hard way I actually fished with him on saturday really uh, I, I had messaged matt scotch mr scotch about where to fish like i was gonna go to the brazos the river and say hey yeah. can I, i've heard about it it's legendary i was gonna go fish the river saturday morning he said nah don't do that man I, we're going to a little lake up here i won't name it because i don't know if it's like a secret but we're going to a lake up here north of north of uh, possum kingdom come up here so i drove up the mountainside uh with the little subi made it up there and, and fished with them and and one of the guys, three the hard way, who watches the show a lot, was there and visited with him for a bit, and some other guys caught actually caught fish Saturday there, so that was fun. I uh, speaking of listeners, uh, I was staying in the same trailer park uh, with Jim Baird, who is mm-hmm. a contest winner here, uh, all around great guy. He came up and introduced himself, and we hung out. And uh, then Saturday, um, I'm with we're at, with Steve O, and you know, hanging out with some people Saturday. And he's like, Lambert, uh, you know, somebody needs your help. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, they just called. Their truck's buried in a mud hole down by the river. They need you to come pull them out. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And I was like, who is it? And he's like, Jim Baird. And I was like, ah. I was like, hell, I'll be right there. So <laughs> <laughs> me, and, uh, me and Guillermo loaded up. Guillermo had a tow strap, and uh, we loaded up and went down by the river. I would have videoed it like I usually do for Lambert's towing and recovery. Uh, but Jim has a very nice truck, and there was a tree really close to it, so I didn't want any evidence that uh, didn't need to <laughs> yeah. didn't be documented there in case I pulled that AT4 off into the tree. <laughs> very good. I ran into Jim at the Dairy Queen while I was enjoying a <laughs> enjoying a non uh, keto friendly meal at the Dairy Queen. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I ran into him there and we visited for, that was pre him getting stuck. That was earlier yeah. in the day. Thanks but you should have told him not to go drive off in a seven foot mud hole yeah. and bury that AT4 yeah. to the frame. Cause I didn't know if that 3000 pound toe strap was going to do us any good there. Hey, what'd you think of the call of canceling the event? There were some people pissed off about it. Uh, at the end of the day, once I got out on the water Saturday at that little lake, I understood why they did it. It was, it was freaky windy, even on that little lake. 10 out of 10, it was the right call. Yeah. They, they had, they canceled a lot of the major bass boat tournaments in the, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I think if, you know, this is a Bassmaster event, this is obviously big. It has a lot of eyes on it. There's a lot of media coverage. If you don't call that off and somebody gets out there and gets hurt or worse, uh, I think that's, you know, that's a, a, you've dug yourself a hole that you can't get back out of. It's irresponsible in my opinion to put anglers on the water. Like I know we think we're invincible, we're still in little plastic boats. We saw several people go down at Lake Murray in the wind, uh, people getting stranded, having to be pulled out. Jordan Marshall, you know, sinking that Hobie and losing gear and being washed up on the rocks. And I mean, that you don't want to put people in that path if you don't have to. That's and right. I know we saw some posts and whatnot. Oh, the anglers should know better angler. It doesn't matter. You're still on the water and you're still fishing, you know, when if you know that that stuff is coming and you know you have nearly 200 people out there, you could avoid that and just, you know, play the safe card, which I think was was the way to go. And I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't trade Saturday for the world. That's the best, that's the best tournament day I've seen in a long time. And, and you know what? That's the silver lining. I don't know how. I made a post about this after, after that night was over. I thought it was so fun, man, getting to hang out, play cornhole, just shoot the breeze with a lot of people will. Uh, Jake Penny's in the comments. He was there along with other people. Shout out How do we to get Sneaky for buying all the food and cooking for yeah. 20 people. <laughs> yeah, he was he was that up was there uh, whipping stuff up on the little Blackstone. Yeah. Pendergraft was messing with wieners up there. It was a good time. But <laughs> how do we get how do we get more of that, man? How do we get more of that? Even if it's obviously we can't cancel all the Saturday takeoffs, but on Thursday, Friday, something, how do we get more of that? I've, I've said this for a couple years now. I think the pre-fishing stuff, and I know – I know you can't cater to everybody, right? But these big events make Friday off limits. Have pre-fishing. If you want to start it the weekend before, that's fine. But, you know, take that Friday and make it off limits to, to pre-fishing. Let the, let the lake rest because we've seen this, especially what comes to mind is the Susquehanna at the Hobie tournament where there's 200 anglers on the water. And they're just out there beating the hell out of the fish the day before the tournament. Like, you're not just 
hurting yourself, but you're also hurting anyone else that had planned on <laughs> fishing that area. Like, I think people are, are slightly irresponsible in the pre-fishing techniques in some cases. And you take that off, you have everybody in town, you have a, you know, a captain's meeting, and then people can, can hang out and get to know each other and relax and kind of enjoy the atmosphere a little bit instead of it. I feel like right now it's just super packed in and it's super focused on on the tournaments and they're big it's big payouts so yeah. it you know it warrants that but i think we've lost some of the you know humanity in the whole thing yeah that's true and you know that the old way of doing it you were kind of forced in there especially the really old way with pre-turny x and stuff uh all that you had to check in manually you had to turn in pictures manually you were forced to hang out and do things and we don't want to force it but we still want there to be an opportunity for people to do these and i want to see it grow like we had what 15 20 people there yeah. saturday hanging out used to like you would pick a random spot at a campground and 60 people would show up you'd have a bonfire and you know like i want it to get back to that because there's so many people that don't get to know each other now or you know especially new people in the sport like we were sitting there you know saturday we're telling stories about eight, nine, 10 years ago when this stuff was just getting off the ground about how great it was. And I feel like people just getting into it now are kind of missing that experience. And that's what, I think that's what got a lot of us hooked on this and kind of invested in, in watching it grow. Amen. Amen. Uh, we need, we need more of that, man. We need more of that. Uh, we're waiting on a couple of guests to get here. We've got our first guest, which is Matt Ramey. I ran into Matt. We launched together, like I said, this uh, Sunday morning, not Saturday morning. He's going to be here to talk about the big bass and what he thought about the lake and how it fished. And we're waiting on Brandon Prince is out turkey hunting. He finished second place. Eco Fishing Shop's own pro staffer, Brandon, Brandon Prince. Where's the uh, turkey on that? It's dark out here. He's in Colorado. He's in the mountains. He went uh, after okay. after the tournament, went out to Colorado. He said, I'm going to try to get in there. If the signal's good, he's going to do what he can. So we'll see if he can get All in right. here. Uh, and then Jason Isaacs is coming on a little bit later in the show. Yep. Uh, Correct. We're just waiting on him to get here a little bit later. So we'll talk to Matt first and talk about that. That big one that he held off the possum king himself to win that big bass. That was a freaking giant. Uh, I saw Mark's giant post, and obviously, since I wasn't catching fish, I had a ton of free time to <laughs> to internet on Sunday. And I saw Matt's fish, and I was like, "Good night in the morning." I mean, that is a monster. Yeah, I, you know, I saw him at the ramp. I said, "Dude, I, every time I fish in Texas, I seem like I find you at a ramp somewhere, and you're always up there catching big ones." And sure enough, he won the won the big bass. So keeping that mojo alive. I thought Marky Mark was going to do it again. We had a late night shooting pool Saturday, uh, as we usually do. Uh, some guy made a comment about why do you fish out of kayaks? Because you don't have enough money to buy a bass boat. Uh, so at that point, I decided that dude was never going to win a game of pool in that bar <laughs> that night. I yeah. uh, made that my mission. And uh, it was kind of the same scenario as when the Possum King took shape. Uh, out there four years ago, I was like, mm -hmm. Mark may actually have the winning formula here. And he caught that huge one up front. I was like, dude, I will die if he goes out and literally copy and paste repeats it again. But unfortunately, I think his bass turned to catfish and drum and all kinds of other stuff there. So yeah. sad, yeah. sad that the Possum King fell on this one. Yep. Well, uh, let's give a shout out to the sponsors. We'll get mad in here. He's been waiting, waiting patiently for us. Uh, Eco Fishing Shop, I already mentioned him. Brandon Prince, pro staffer. This guy's been killing it on the BOS side. He really just got into the Bassmaster side of things, and boom, he's made a splash already. But Eco Fishing Shop, they sponsor a lot of anglers this year. They're trying to grow their pro team, but of course, they're known for nationwide shipping of all the top kayak brands as well as all the gear you might need to rig your kayak with. So check out EcoFishingShop.com. I saw a lot of Eco Fishing stickers and shirts uh -huh. and hats around the deal, didn't you? Yep, I sure did. Yeah. Uh, Western Sun Vodka, man, Duke had a Western Sun hos hospitality table set up at the check-in. Uh, I didn't get to partake as I was talking to my son through an emergency on the highway back here in Arkansas. <laughs> uh, it all worked out. Uh, but Western Sun, man, we appreciate them. If it's in Texas, you know there's going to be a presence of Western Sun, but they're they're growing their brand nationwide. And then Pro God yeah. Lithium, did you burn yours up? No. No, man. Couldn't burn through it. Nope. I ran, I ran the heck out of it uh, Sunday. Covered a ton of water, spot locked in that wind for hours and hours and hours. Uh, and then I didn't charge it after my 13-hour drive home and went fishing today and caught some smallmouth uh, on it yesterday and today without charging it. So shout out to Pro Guide. Appreciate there, that. There you go, Pro Guide. Yeah. Uh, of course, we do our giveaway partners tonight. We're going to do Z-Man. We're back on that Z-Man giveaway tonight. So like, share, comment, all the things from wherever you're watching from. We'll get you into the giveaway. Uh, Seagar. 
man I i've got a video i'm gonna post i'm gonna make a short out of it from saturday fishing using my cigar line i got wrapped i thought i had the one on this little lake and got wrapped up in a tree pulled the tree off the bottom got the bait and had a giant flathead on there in the line pulled the, did you say pulled the tree off the bottom yeah big limb of the tree up off the bottom <laughs> of the lake with the crankbait with the catfish and got it loose and the line never broke so there you go uprooted a whole tree with it yeah yeah you yeah. know uh then revo glasses of course we use those over the weekend and i never did need the gill gear no rain so we had beautiful weather texas weather so appreciated that um with that hey. said man let's get let's get mad in here talk, to, talk a little it. bit of big bass with the big bass man himself what's up mr ramey you back in back home back west back home yeah well, well glad to have me on fellas i'm excited yeah, man. Dude, you you caught a freaking tank. <laughs> I mean, that thing was that thing was as as big around as it was long. I feel like it, it was surprising. And then you know, surprisingly enough, I actually had a scale. Like very rarely do I have one. And uh, you know, that adrenaline pump first thing. It was I caught her. At, I think it was on my timestamp like seven fifteen was like my first like selfie photo with it. So it was early. So um, and I I thought I had like a. When I first saw her, I thought she was about a nine, eight or nine, and she only weighed out seven ten. So surprisingly enough, she what? was she was completely like empty and and like when I put on the oh board, like her belly would bulge out a little bit. But when you picked her up, man, it was just like inverted almost. So she was just just got done, I think, spawning in that area. So not not anywhere near a PB, but she was a giant by length for sure. That's crazy. You were catching that fish while I was launching my kayak. So that's pretty fair. <laughs> uh, I would have done the same if we fished on Saturday. I'd have been way late. <laughs> there she is. I thought they were on the screen. And we had several. I mean, you know, we talk about how tough the fishing was, but you're still on Possum Kingdom, right? So we didn't see those 110 inch plus limits, but we saw several, several, several fish over the 23 inch mark. Uh, come in in this tournament to be honest i didn't think mine would even hold out i i really was um like very skeptical of that i i just knew we we're on pk it's kind of like lake fork you really never know or you never can just assume you got it because there's always a bigger fish so i really did think that um because when i did get service the first thing i did was like run through on the big fish you know i'm just like checking that initial like hit list and saw mark had a 24 and i was like oh that's not a good sign for me because <laughs> he might put a couple more on there. And then, like you said, there was, I don't know how many 24s that were right there at it. So uh, I, I didn't think it was going to even hold out. I, I, even at the end of the day, I texted Steve and I was like, uh, am I, am I coming to towards I'm an hour drive away. I'm at Possum hollow across the lake where we launched. So he was like, then he texted me like, or, you know, got the bass notice. So it worked out good. I mean, it was, it was a great, great start to uh you know a national trail for me at least even though it was i never could get a fifth fish yeah th after starting like that with that that big and i mean do you immediately have delusions of all right this it is it is on we bet we're about to drop <laughs> one, 110 on these fools in a heartbeat uh i i had the delusion i, I did i immediately right um so kind of just backstoring into that fish um you know i pulled into that spot it, it was just dead calm and i was just gonna run through it it looked good and i'm literally sitting there and the entire two little coves i'm in they're just boiling straight boiling i mean it is full-on shad they're just getting hammered and i can't get a bite and i anything i threw i mean chatter bait spinner bait everything um but that eventually kind of like transitioned to actually them getting to the bank. So the shad were just headed that way. And then they just started literally jumping on the banks. And I'm like, oh, is that bass like chasing them up there? That's kind of what my thought was, right? They're getting pushed. They're hitting it. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, got in a corner where, I don't know, there was probably 30 or 40 birds on this spot just eating shad and stuff. So I finally got a spinnerbait up there. Um, two cranks off like a mesquite lay down that was in the water. She hit it. As soon as she did, she came up um, and then adrenaline pumped. And I, I, you know, I was trying to overwork that fish, finally calmed down just a little bit, but where delusion set in for that fish was I got her finally calmed down a little bit. I put her in the net and as soon as I did it, she shook and my spinner bait fell in half. So I had half, I had the blades on my line and the hook just sticking out of her mouth on that last shake and i set her over the side of the boat and i was like 
it might be one of those days. Um, and it did not turn out to be that way. I lost, <laughs> uh, I lost five fish uh, immediately after her and I could not put anything in the boat. So it was just a, it was a rough day overall after that. You lost five on the spinnerbait? Uh, I lost two on a spinnerbait, two on a shaky head, and then um, I had one, I guess it was three. I had one bend an entire shaky head out, so I lost another. I had, you know, everybody has the bites, right? It's PK. Those big ones are just there constantly, and uh, my, my hook was dead straight, so ended up losing three on a shaky head, and then I, I busted two on a spinnerbait. I don't know. They just, it was a weird day. Yeah. Yep. It's a uh, wild story, man. And, and like you said, PK is one of those places to where you are a bite or two from everything changing. Right. So I don't, I don't know if you could guess what a couple of those that shook off were or, or came off, but I bet it, I bet it bumps you up 30, 30 places in the, in the standings. Yeah. I, I know the second one, the, the fish immediately following that one. Uh, it was dirt shallow. It was actually chasing that bait. And I, I went down to a, to turn the torpedo off and I looked away and I killed that spinner bait. I'm only like a foot of water. Um, and it ate it on that drop. And when I did it, I mean, I could literally see the back of the fish. She was probably another 19 to 21. I mean, it was a, it was a big fish that, that I saw and that one right there alone. I mean, you give me that one more fish, that's 20 spots on the standing. So unbelievable it's yeah. crazy it did, it did not treat us like we thought it was going to you know I, I think i thought we were hitting it you know exactly right i thought you know looking at, at where it was in the year the moon phase the temperatures and stuff i was like man surely there's going to be a lot of these big fish pushed in shallow but i feel like we were in between waves i feel like you know there's already obviously one one wave that had been up and spawned out there were a lot of little bucks that were up shallow on the south end in the clear water, but no females. So I, th I think, you know, the, probably this next full moon, we probably missed it by a week and a half, <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> and it made that lake fish so tough. And you can tell by some of the local hammers and bigger names in Texas struggling in this tournament. Like, I don't think anybody would have guessed that would have happened. And I know they wouldn't think so either, but uh, it, it, that tells you something's going on with the lake. Uh, when when you don't see those, you know, kind of traditional names up there in the top ten, top fifteen. Yeah, I'm looking at the leaderboard, man. You see BDH down there, Garrett Morgan's down there, Guillermo's down there, Scotch on, didn't limit out. I mean, I'm not throwing salt on their wounds. Those guys are some of the best to do it, yeah, no matter where yeah, the, where the sure. deal is. I mean, and it, Matt and I talked about this before we went live. I think depending on where you are on the lake during that weekend, it was they were in different phases all over the place because we heard people talking about spawners and catching them off beds and getting them on top water. Whereas people in different parts of the lake couldn't get a sniff on a top water, didn't see any bed fish. So what do you think about that, Matt? What what kind of vast difference from one end of the lake to the other were we looking at? Uh, you know, because I, I, I did that same. I mean, I launched out of Possum Hollow practice. I zeroed on Friday. I went 14 miles, and I didn't see a cruiser. I didn't see a bed. I didn't see an old bed. I I didn't see anything in that little bit more stained water. The only thing I could think of is that rain was just maybe cold enough to to cool that off or to, to divert that fish, that section of that lake to do something different because it, it definitely wasn't there for me. I, I didn't see anything like what other people were. And uh, we had other guys, you know, I had Jeff Sherwood and Gene Cooper from New Mexico that were on the south end and were chatting back and forth. And he's like, dude, they're literally on beds at the house we're staying at. He's like, I could see them doing their thing right there. And I'm like, that, not where I'm at. So I, I don't know exactly what maybe triggered that, but uh, I didn't have the same experience that the south end of that lake did. And I figured that would be the place it wasn't going down, to be completely honest. I figured where I was going, kind of a little bit stained water, new rain, increased water levels, like they're going to stay there. I mean, 65 degree water temp on Friday. I was like, yeah, they're going to stay put. They might not be locked on, but I was like, we're going to get them to eat either way. And that is truly not the case. Um, we'll hear from the guys that actually figured out how to put together <laughs> limits, unlike the rest of us. But uh, I, I was on the south end of the lake, and there were, like I said, there were bucks up, you know, shallow, on beds, kind of hanging out in a couple feet of water. But they were so spooky from anything. As soon as the bait hit the water, they would turn and swim away. Like, it was insane. I, I've never, I've never seen fish act 
that spooky. I was fishing a brush pile with the live scope in 20 feet of water, and I would drop a jig down into it and watch the fish swim out of the brush. Like, I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like, this is the most frustrating. You know, people talk about live scope. If you ain't scoping, you're hoping. I'm, you know, I'm not hoping. I'm watching these suckers swim away from my bait. Like, that's, that's just depressing at that point, I feel like. Yeah, that is sure, man. I haven't gone down the scope route yet, but I've heard that story, Ryan, about how it can be mind-numbing to watch them not eat as much as it is a tool when they are eating. Well, because right. you have the don't fish, the, you know, don't leave fish to find fish mentality, right? Like, you've got a brush pile full of fish. Don't leave it. Keep working them. But then you work it for hours. You know, glide baits over the top, watching them come up after it, throwing shaky heads and jigs into the brush pile and watching them <laughs> swim away from it. At what point do you just scrap the whole deal and like, all right, it's time to take up a new sport, join a cornhole league. <laughs> J Mac, I see your comment. He said he was out west, all keepers on a Carolina rig. That warms my heart. I love a Carolina rig. I actually drug it around a little bit. I, I got too. three bites on it. I missed two and broke another one off. So there you go. It, I, even even my magic Carolina rig wasn't working for me. It was it was tough. Tough. Roll. I don't think I had a lot of magic anywhere on that deal. Yeah, that yeah. Was... I I lost a few fish myself, Ryan. Uh, could have put together a limit, but could have don't matter. I ended up with two fish. Yeah. Could have yeah. done matter. If, yeah, if some butts were candy and nuts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's not a there's not a, a drop down box for that on the turning no. X board for some reason. No. We need to create a almost had a limit league. <laughs> what should it. you have had? Yeah. What, do you, what do you feel like you should have had? Yeah, we'll, we'll make that a deal. Uh no, but still I thought it, I hadn't been to Possum Kingdom before and I thought it was a great place. I thought the lake was cool. I thought the, the surrounding area, the hill country was beautiful. I mean, have you been there before, Matt? What do you think of, of PK in general? Yeah, we've been a few times. Um, <clears throat> a lot of us actually, like out of New Mexico, PK is that that perfect distance from New Mexico. Like where we have, we host like three boat tournaments on Possum Kingdom a year from our different nation trails on the boater side. Uh, obviously, the kayak side doesn't because we've been going to it, but I've been there, I don't know, four or five times now. I love it. Uh, like where we stay at Possum Hollow, that community is so receptive to. Uh, any angler right but uh for us like they give us new mexico bass nation we spend a ton of money there so like we call them up they reserve our rooms you know they leave the key in the door we don't have to worry about checking in or you know they give us late checkouts so we don't got to worry about cleaning out a house at five in the morning before launch when you're really thinking about fishing and um stuff like that so i mean that that community that lake is it, it's a special place for us we, we love it a lot and uh, we we ended up getting eight guys out there from New Mexico this event, so that was something really cool too. Because out of the kayak side, that's still a growing thing for us to get out more national views. But we lo we really like PK, especially that side of the lake. I mean, the only downside is it's like an hour drive to the chamber, but I mean you only do that once, and if you make boards, that's twice. So it's really not a bad deal. Um, so we got to hang out and do a good time. So it was really good. We love that lake, love that place, and we always stay on that side. So it's it's really cool. I was wondering why I didn't see Sherwood. That makes sense. He was across the lake. I was like, surely Sherwood would be in boondocks here. This doesn't make sense. He actually got a house with uh, three or four extra guys on the on the on down by the dam or on the other side. So I don't know he what he's doing. Really? I, don't, I didn't see him at all. But then I saw like his name on the, you know, on Tourney X. I was like, Sherwood's here and he hadn't even said nothing. Shoot. I don't know. Yeah, he, they came by on Friday night and hung out and had a, a beer with us and I was actually going to allude to that, Ryan, like what you said, man, that was such a cool thing. I, I'm 100% part of that, like Friday being canceled aspect of a tournament because I got home, I've had calls and everybody congratulated me. And I said, that was the most fun I've ever had on a tournament. And like, you know, we started in like 16 in New Mexico and I was like, same concept, right? The camaraderie, the hanging out, we used to go to lakes and it was a big party. That was the camp. Everybody slept in their trucks or on the floor, whatever it was. And, uh, we got to experience that too. So, I mean, it's a very similar concept, right? We hung out with Duke and uh, he was over there with us and a couple other guys. We had some Colorado guys come by and we were able to experience the same thing you guys did on that Friday hangout or the Saturday transition of being canceled. So that was a, uh, I wish we could do that more because that was, yeah. that made that event fun. And I was like, I want to go back. I want to go do the same exact thing. One day shootout, let's go do it. Cause yep. that was awesome. Yep. yep, I would sign off on that. Jeff and I didn't, uh, we didn't have that luxury on Friday. We were about 
uh, elbow deep in a cornhole tournament in some dude's garage <laughs> behind his house in the middle of nowhere in Graham, Texas. Yeah, when Ryan sent me the directions and I was driving down there, I thought I'm about to get <laughs> human trafficked or something when I pull in this place. I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, it was bad, but the people, people were man. good as gold, good man. People met a dude that called himself Gator. He was quite the quite the character back then. He had the whole Animal Planet tattooed up and down yeah. his arms. If they ain't scared of the Gator, I give them the Great White Shark <laughs> over on that. <laughs> <laughs> we met some characters out there, man. Good people. Salt of the earth. <laughs> I know a guy named Gator from that area. I'm wondering if it's my homie that I know very well. <laughs> Does he oh, wear royal funny. blue, basically basketball suits, color coordinated, top to bottom? Oh no, that okay. We're we're good then. Okay. <laughs> kind of built like a melted <laughs> candle. No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Gator, if you're watching. <laughs> 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 sorry. That's terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gator. Uh anyway. <laughs> anyway. So accurate. God. Yeah. <laughs> Wesley, she's dying. We Wesley, she's in the comments. We saw Wesley Gray over there. Uh Rod Merritt. I want to shout out to Rod from Maine, dude, because he gave me this hat. It's my new old town hat while I was there. Oh, so shout right. out to you, Rod. Shout out to Rod. He brought some some hats for the old town folks straight from Maine. Vintage from Maine. Shout out to Mark Cisneros for rolling up on me and taking a picture with my giant Academy bag of baits that I bought. Is that what was <laughs> flopping off the back? Sitting in the tank well. <laughs> Love that. Don't crop that, man. Just throw it up there, man. It's got the yeah. garbage bag in the back of the kayak. Like, I have no idea what I'm about to do. So, the first keeper I caught of the day, Ryan, I laughed because I saw Mark over there. He was flying his drone around our cove, and I saw him over there. Boom. I hook up as soon as he's flying that drone over I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get some good shots. I bring it, bring it in. It's like a 15 incher. Get it measured. I hear the drone above, but I can't see it. Let it go, and then he comes around, and I said, I said, man, that was perfect timing, dude. He said, you caught one. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you go, looking Mark. at, man? You're flying it all over Mark. the place. Like, golly, come on, man. Like, no he still got some good, get some good photos. Actually, Kate liked the photo he, he took. So there we go. Uh, any questions for Matt about PK or how he, how he caught that big and or how he targets big ones? Because he's no, there's no secret to him to catch these. I, one of the most impressive performances I've ever seen was him winning the TOC on Fort. How many years ago? How many years ago was that? Now, Matt. Uh, doesn't sound 19, like long ago, but it was. Yeah, that was nineteen. The, the BOS event. Yeah, the that June. Yeah, yeah. Or I said TOC. Yeah, I'm, every time I think of Fork, I think of that original TOC, but Me BOS too. event on Fork go back yeah. to that one yeah no it's yeah been a while for sure that that was a i didn't actually win big bass on that event but cracked the the win out of that one but yeah yeah that was, that was an impressive flipping flipping exhibition over there uh sydney's got the stats she said five years lol sorry sydney it was pre-covid covid made everything seem like it was just yesterday it put everything on on pause so sorry so sorry that it did yeah What's uh, next for you, sir? You got any more bass events on the schedule? Um, Caddo, probably. Um, I'm really going to try to make right Patman, I believe, uh, for the Hobie. Uh, you know, get out that way again. Uh, Caddo for, for them as well. But uh, kind of switching gears, right? I mean, at home, I direct the New Mexico Bass Nation Trail, and I got a couple other local tournaments that I run for my dealer and things like that. So kind of switch gears, get these guys at home, get their uh, – get their tournaments in we actually had a two two events were scheduled the uh the weekend prior to pk and i had to cancel both due to high winds um it was a saturday and sunday thing so uh when at pk we canceled another day so i was like man i'm three for three right now on tournaments and win um so i'm praying that we get some some relief here but get this trail going for us for the year uh get our guys to the state championship here and hopefully get them qualified because uh, right now, our number one goal is to do that for the state, you know, get people back to the Texas championship next year. And then, uh, but for me, I'm also fishing when I can, the Texas Nation Trail and the West Texas Trail. So uh, Brownwood Lake is next. I'll be on there with Texas Nation and next weekend. So that's them and then my events after that shortly. So a lot of local stuff from there and then get later into the year. But that's kind of the plan now, so. Real quick question for you, then we'll let you slide out of here. Chris, two Chris's both asked similar questions. One on Facebook, one on YouTube. One can't catch a big one to save his life. The other, what do what do you look for to to find?
bigger bass. Is there a specific way or technique you use to, to kind of look for where big ones should be holding up? I, I mean, that's a, that is definitely a loaded question in that terms, but I, I feel more comfortable when I'm in Texas doing that. New Mexico is very hard to do at other places, but I am that traditional Creek channel ditch fisherman. Uh, that's definitely like where I, I find my, my sweet spot is getting into those drains and those cuts and like Lake Fork. I'm, I'm most popular for, you know, punching grass mats, but that's even a skill in its own. You gotta know what the lake looks like, the areas, uh, things like that. So I'm kind of a drain fisherman, especially this time of year, early season and fall season in Texas. And that's kind of where I was, I was doing that little Creek that I fished at PK. It had a little inlet it came in. So there was some fresh water on one side of it. And you know, the, it was a little bit sturdier stained water. So I always hunt that little bit off colored water and, and try to fish some ditches and drains keeps them around a little bit longer is how i always feel is the way to target them for me so that's what there i do there you go the first thing you said there fish in texas that's yeah <laughs> fish in texas yeah i mean <laughs> that's yep. number one right yeah yeah well matt man well done we appreciate you taking the time after making the long, long drive home to come on here and talk about your big fish and just just chat with us a bit man we'll let you get out of here but we appreciate you hey thanks fellas i appreciate it a ton and uh, i look forward to seeing y'all in the very near future to to fish again and hopefully we can hang out and do something fun community wise let's yes, do sir. it man congrats again buddy thanks fellas y'all take it easy there we go right, matt, matt ramey everybody love matt ramey awesome guy uh super we've got knowledgeable, super knowledgeable yeah. guy if you never had a chance to just sit down and pick his brain like he he thinks like a fish yeah uh, and waiting backstage straight out of ohio Hey, the winner, Jason <laughs> Isaacs. What part of Ohio are you in, Jason? Columbus. Yeah, baby. Oh, are you a Buckhouse fan? Please say you are. Absolutely not. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I'm from West Virginia, man. I'm a West Virginia fan. All right, all right, all right. All right. I was Absolutely born and raised over there in Dayton, Ohio. So I'm an Ohio okay. Guy I got to go to Dayton tomorrow for work. <laughs> yeah, my mom actually lives in Columbus. So there you go, small world. Oh, nice. Um, Congrats, man. Thanks for sliding thank on here a little late tonight. We we appreciate you and congrats on the huge win. Literally. Yeah, thank you. Win. And for, for those of you who don't know, Jason is Tim Isaac's son. Grouchy old Tim Isaacs. This is his boy here. <laughs> and Tim has been on a freaking cash check and tear this year, hasn't it? Good night. He's been I wearing feel it like out. Every time I open up Facebook, it's Tim holding another dang check. Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, he's wearing it out, that's for sure. And then you come in here and want a, want a big one on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was crazy. How did how did your tournament go? How was pre fishing? When did y'all get out there and kind of what did you see on the lake? Um so I fished the Hobie tournament on Norman on day one and had seventy five inches and decided to head to Texas on Sunday. I didn't even fish day two because it's not a lake you can make up for it. You just you, you're you're not going to put up a hundred inches and like oh oh yeah I have a chance no I, I should have never even signed up for that event I hate that lake um, <laughs> I'm just being honest uh, I mean I said it before before I even went down there I like I told Tarek Walker I'm like dude I hate this lake I don't even know why I signed up um, yeah stupid but uh, man I got out there and like on 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 deck like on Monday I. I probably went seven miles one direction and caught one fish and it, it was, it was rough. I think I might've caught a white bass too. Yeah, maybe. But other than that, like, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to fish Tuesday cause they was calling for a bunch of bad weather, mm -hmm. but it, but they, it, it ended up moving and me and Jody went up in a Creek and you know, we, we, we had hooked some fish. Um, I only caught like I actually caught one, put my hands on one, but I had some get off and he caught some fish and stuff. But uh and then Wednesday I didn't fish because of the weather. <clears throat> and then Thursday, um I think I put into the state park and I went all the way back in that creek and never got a bite the whole way back there. And on my way back out, there was a flat, probably like a three foot flat. It wasn't very big, but the wind was coming across it perfect. I was like, man, I gotta go fish this. And I probably got five bites in about 15 minutes. And one, one was a 19. And after I caught that 19, I thought, man, there's, 
this is pointless. Like the wind's not even going to come across this on, on Saturday and Sunday because it's coming out of the south because it was on the south bank. Yeah. So I, I, I just X that off immediately. You know what I mean? And I actually, um, Russ told me he fished it in the tournament and got zero bites. <laughs> so I was right. <laughs> um, and then Friday, uh, my dad had caught some, you know, caught, caught some fish on docks. So I went and tried fishing docks, which I hate. I mean, obviously, like with Norman, I didn't even fish the docks at Norman. I fished up the river. I hate it. <laughs> fishing boat docks. Um, yeah. So I went and fished some docks, and I didn't, I didn't catch nothing. I think that was it. Um, so I was going to go fish up that creek. That was my plan for day one, and I knew Josh Sharp was going to be up there too because we had talked about it, and he said that he knew of at least four other people that was going to fish that creek. And I was like, dude, that place is not big at all. Like – not at all like and and we and i know it got beat on during practice because i heard of like, like so many people coming in and out of there so that pretty much just like I, I was i'm you know like i said it at the awards like i was kind of upset that he canceled day one because i knew i wasn't going to catch a limit and i'd be driving home on sunday <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I swear to God. I like as soon as they canceled it, I looked at Jody because uh, he's in the house. And I was like, you know what that means, don't you? He said, "What?" Well, that means I'm not going home Sunday. <laughs> um, so what so, changed? I mean, what changed in your mind that that obviously led you to finding the biggest bag on PK for Sunday? Well, I I, I just knew that there was going to be too many people in that creek, and there's only a couple little backwaters coming off of it that, that had that had some fish in it. And we were, we were, it were, the fish were anywhere from 14 to 18 inches. And I just didn't feel like that was going to, that was going to cut it. Um, but I think the guy that ended up in third, he fished back there from what I understand. But anyway, I just told my dad, I was like, man, I'm gonna go fish that spot where you hooked a couple fish on Thursday. And he said, yeah, cause he wasn't going to go there either on day one. And then he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go up there too. I was like, cool. You know, we'll go up there and fish together. I mean, it's a huge cove. There's tons of docks in it. Um, and like right off the bat in the morning, the wind was blowing pretty good. So I thought, cool, I don't, I don't, I don't have to fish docks. I can throw a moving bait. Right. <laughs> and I threw the crap out of spinner bait and never got bit on it. And then I just started fishing docks. And I think like the fourth or fifth dock, I, I, I like on the walkway on the post, there was like, I don't know, they're probably like four foot apart. And I seen a fish in between them. On, on my perspective mode and <clears throat> I, I assumed it was a carp because there was millions of them uh, i don't yeah, I, yes. I don't know if you guys saw carp or not but i saw oh, so yeah. many it was oh, so wow. bad all i saw was carp um <laughs> yeah so i, I cast it over anyway uh, and, and, I, and i got a bite and i set the hook and that thing just took off digging and i thought man that's a freaking catfish a hundred percent so i'm just letting it swim around and i'm i'm like not even like like I, in my mind, I, I 100% think it's a catfish. Okay. Um, and then finally it come up beside me. I was like, Oh my God, it's a giant. And I loosened my drag up, let it run around a little bit more, let it get tired. And then, you know, I got, <laughs> we're eight minutes after the hook set. I got point. it in the boat. It was crazy. Yeah. And there you, I can see the perspective mode on right there. Um, with yeah. The it, was, it was, a, yep. Yeah. That, that's, that's how I keep it. I don't do like forward facing. Um, I just don't want to be stuck on the screen. I just use that to look for structure basically and to see if there's any movement in the area. Um, and that's about it. Like I don't stay looking at that screen at all, really. Like I just, I'd rather just fish, you know what I mean? Um, and then, and then from there, like a little bit later, like I, I hadn't caught a fish and I was like, I was in my, I was in my head so bad. I'm like, that's going to be the only fish I, I catch all day guaranteed. Cause I only caught like three all week. Right. <laughs> um and then i ended up catching like a 16 and then like a 14 and then like a 15 and i'm like okay now i got like two hours to catch one fish so i, I was comfortable i felt okay about it anyway um and then i come up on this dock and the wind was blowing really good and on perspective mode when the wind blows like it, it kind of makes like a like like some like fuzzy lines on the, on the perspective mode you know it's kind of weird and i wasn't a hundred percent if there was fish or rocks or what it was down in between these posts so I, I i cast it over there there was nothing i cast it again nothing on the third cast i caught a 19. 
<clears throat> and then after I caught that 19, I cast it on the set of posts behind it and I got bit and I set the hook and I jerked it out of its mouth. I didn't even get a hook in it. So I cast it right back to the, to the set of posts that had the 19 on it and I caught a 21 and three quarters and then let it go and cast it right back on those posts and caught a 21. I was like, man, what is going what? on? This is insane. Uh, yes. That, that'll that never happen one again in my life. Doc? One doc post. <laughs> And there, there was a brush more fish. There was, mean, there, was, I don't even know, man. There was more fish there too, and I couldn't get them to bite. I threw everything. I was like, "This is nuts." I wanted, I wanted to get rid of that sixteen because I thought for sure people didn't have service or were sandbagging or something. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so yeah, it was crazy. It was. I was, I was emotional about it, man. It was nuts. I was like, "This is crazy. I can't believe this has happened to me." And then the, the camera Same boat. The camera boat. Today, man. Yeah, the we camera boat came before. and. And, and and they were like, and I told him that I caught those three fish on that post. And that dude that was a guide, he was like, are you serious? I was like, I swear to God, man, right there. Caught them on a little worm. Every one of them. Caught every one of them on a fatty Z. Yeah, fatty Z. I threw the hell out of that thing. I put, I probably put 20 miles on that fatty Z, just dragging it across <laughs> points and shit on Sunday. <laughs> I couldn't get bit on anything. I never got bit on a worm all week. It was all moving baits. I, I got bit on a buzz bait. I got bit on a spinner bait and a jackhammer. <clears throat> but were you fishing? Never got uh, bit on the worm. Fishing more stained water or clear water? Where you found those fish? I if I would say there was probably two and a half feet of visibility, okay. roughly, depending on where you know how bad the wind hit that bank or how bad the carp had messed that bank up. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Because the carp, the carp definitely played a factor in dirtying the water up. Holy hell! Back where I was fishing, they were everywhere, splashing on the bank, just tearing everything up back there. Man, in the reeds, you could hear them in the reeds. It was crazy. It was so annoying. I would, typically, with those with dock fishing like that, a lot of times when they're spawning, if they're in the spawn, you'll find one spawning on those concrete pilings around the bottom of the dock post or something like that. But not three fish. What what was the juice there? You think? I, those are all post-spawn fish. They were all spawned out. The, the, the 23, it was definitely pre-spawn. That's the only fish I caught all week that had any weight to it at all. Every every other fish was paper thin, it seemed like. So, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. Like, the, Did you think the wind pushed them in there? Was there, like Ryan said, was there a brush pile down in there? Was there just... I think there were some rocks down there around okay. around that. Yeah, because like I said, I couldn't tell if it was rocks or and fish or both. Because, like I said, the wind, the wind was blowing real good. Like, it, it, it kind of creates a fuzz on the screen a little bit. And it's, it's, it's weird. But I was like, it definitely looks like something's moving, so I'm going to cast it there. <laughs> I even came back to it like an hour later, and the fish were still there. I don't know if it was the same fish. They all went back to it. I doubt it, right? But um, and just never got bit on it. How, how many times have we heard that, Ryan, about somebody with a bad practice going on and winning a tournament like this? I mean, that is not an a uncommon lot. story. A lot. You just got to keep fishing, man. You know, yeah. practice practice only helps when your fish still show up. <laughs> almost almost every check I've yeah almost almost every check I've cast I've had practices at all. Yeah, eliminating water is is a real thing, right? I eliminated uh, the whole lake. Yeah, the, okay, but I'll meet you at the pool table or the <laughs> I'm I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah, man, so, I told that I told that the guy on the camera boat. I said, uh, I said before today, you couldn't have paid me to come back to this lake, and he was like, "Man, this place is phenomenal." I was like, "I believe you," but it's not for it wasn't for me. <laughs> so what frustrated me? I was out there, and they pull up on me or whatever, and I'm throwing this giant ass glide bait across some submerged brush. And I had three like monsters. I mean, watch them. You know, I was on the south end. That water's super clear. Come all the way up on the glide oh, yeah. bank, follow it to the boat, and not eat it. And I was pissed at this point when they got up on me. And the guy dude's like, "Yeah, this is a really good spot." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, it is. I've watched twenty-four pounds worth of fish, you know, swim up by the boat here on three casts. So, thank you. You're right. He had he had he had thirty-two pounds. The day before, he had a no, ten, a eight, a five, and two fours. He told me in that tournament. Yeah, he won it the week he before too. <laughs> There's a reason he's a guide, I would say. I wanted to, I wanted to ask, yeah, I wanted to ask him like what he was doing, but I didn't, get, I didn't get to see him after that or talk to him. 
it's curious. Oh man. I mean, everybody knows that's a great lake. I don't know how the timing worked out to it being just that freaking tough. Like when I was out there it was four years ago, <clears> the <throat> first Bassmaster event out there. And it was a, like a, you know, huge flood. There was, you know, roads covered and impassable. And it seemed like that would have fished tougher, but that showed out because it stacked those fish up and all the water was stained yeah. and they were eating really well. And I feel like this, we just hit, you know, water was super clear on the south end. We were in between phases of the spawn. And I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, something just had that lake off. It was, it was undeniably yeah. off if you went down the leaderboard. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Cause yeah, it, I, I struggled all week. Like it was, it was so bad that like I, before I went there, I was going to fish Gunnersville. And then while I was there and was like not doing good, like I got in my head, I'm like, I'm not even going to fish Gunnersville. Like I'll just fish Caddo. And then, and then I do good. I'm like, okay, now I got to fish Gunnersville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I got a really good feeling at, about I didn't do well. Now you got have really, to fish other stuff. Yeah, I got a really good feeling about Caddo. Um, I don't know if you remember in our group chat for fantasy football, they, um, Scott and Siddiqui were talking about how Possum Kingdom was going to have way more 100-inch bags than uh, Caddo. I was like, man, you're crazy. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. There was like 1,500-inch bags in October in the national championship back yeah. th like three years ago. Oh, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be big ones. There'll be big ones caught. For I'm sure. looking forward to that one. I'm a, I'm looking forward to going to the lighthouse and hanging out all night. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I, if yeah. it's ever on any KBF, Hobie, or Bass's schedule, I'll be there always. It's my favorite place to fish. It's a magic, magic lake for sure. <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. that's gonna be awesome. And Ryan, you got me trained now. I stayed out till midnight the other night. You got me, you got me trained up. You did. I was very <laughs> proud of you. That was fantastic. I'm glad they <laughs> called the tournament off the next day. You would have hated no, me yeah. for that one. <laughs> that would have been rough. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Jason, we've we've talked to some folks with last minute heroics. What what time frame was that flurry? Did you have three hours left, an hour left? When did that happen in your day? You know, I don't really pay much attention to that. I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited and emotional. Like it, I was just like, this is nuts. You know, um, I, I think I had probably an hour and a half to go. Maybe I talked to the, to the dudes on the boat for like 20 minutes and they're like, man, you better get back over and fish. I'm like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was wild. And there was like people on top of this the roof of this dock with the, like this swing and they were like jumping off like literally right beside where i was fishing they're jumping off into the water <laughs> it was wild I think, that's I think a big party lake for sure there were a ton of wakeboard boats and stuff getting out in jet skis and cigarette boats yeah i mean it looked like yeah. miami out there by you know two o'clock on sunday afternoon <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a lot of out there in that wind. They were just riding the riding the waves. No big deal. Burning no big gas, baby. Yeah. They got to get they got to get rid of the million somehow. They're just out cruising around. All day long. I guess it was very it was, yeah. it was wild to see the homes on that lake basically be empty all week because they're weekenders. <laughs> yeah, that must right? yeah, that's crazy. There. Yeah, wild, wild money, wild that's money crazy. there. Um, yeah, man. Exciting event. It was cool to see uh, somebody go over 100 inches. I wish Brandon, Brandon's in the mountains. I wish he would have come on here because on his post that he made on Facebook, he said, I don't know if you read it, Ryan, about he did a little tourney recap post. He said that he had his 96 inches by like 930 or 10 in the morning on his recap what? post and yeah. worked a giant on the bed for the rest of the day, pretty much. And finally got it to nose down and set the hook and it wasn't there. Um it pulled, it pulled I, the I worm off, more I think. It. Yeah, like part of the worm off. It was it was crazy. Yeah. So I wanted to hear more about that because how big was it? Did, did you think it? Did he think? Oh, he, caught he said. He said. He said. Oh, it would have. It would have crushed me a hundred percent. Because um, at, at Caddo last year, he was one of the, where I was in first all day, and on day two, him and Rolando both passed me in the last thirty minutes. So when I come into the into the building, I went right up to him. I was like, "Did you pass me again?" He was like, "I came really close." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I, you I'm, know, I was like, I was like, I was worried. Like that's one of the worst feelings ever. Let me tell you, it's like just not knowing. I hate that. 
like the fear of the unknown, it's the worst. Yeah, that that's why Brandon's a hell of an angler. He's from right up the road here. He lives over uh, close he's close to me, actually. Yeah, and he's a hell of a fisherman. Does good over here. Does good nationally in the Hobie events, and he's now in the Bassmaster Ring, killing it as well. Yeah. So, I uh, hope yeah. he's having fun out there turkey hunting. But I wanted to hear that bed fishing story because if I know him, man. Tim Long Cali rigs on there. Hit him with that old snagathon. Yeah, dude, I thought all the Cali boys were snagging. Posting them pictures with the sores on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would, he wouldn't do that. Brandon wouldn't do that. He's good people, but um, hats off to him, man. I'm sure it's last the last we'll see him up in the top five this year either. So, yeah, Jason, man, well done, dude. I appreciate you coming on here. I know you had a hell of a drive back home. How far are Ohio's from there? About eighteen hours. Seventeen. Yeah, I, I made it. I made it in about fifteen and a half, though. Got got a speeding ticket. It's cool. Hey, there we go. I drove 13 hours with one tail light on my trailer the whole way home after the tournament. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I came this close to saying the good thing I just won 10 G's <laughs> to the cop. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close. I was like, nah, I better not. He was cool though. Yeah. I was going, I was going 81 and a 75, and it, it it went down to 55 because of a work zone. And I I was actually on the phone with Russ, and I didn't even see it. And he was on a, he was on a motorcycle and he, you know he got me and he was like you're going 81 and 55 I was like 55 he was like yeah it's a work zone I was like I didn't even see that and uh, he was like there was two different signs I was like man I did I promise you I didn't see it and when he, he came back he was like you need to start paying more attention he was like I only rode it up for 10 10 mile an hour over I was like man thank you I appreciate that and he was just like have a safe trip <laughs> should have had <laughs> so you like been in the passenger seat dude where he could have seen it could just uh, I was like in the it was in the back. All right. <laughs> I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you at Gunnersville here next month, then, huh? Yeah, yeah. I want to see what happens there. I think I can do. Like I said, I think I can. I think I can do really well at Caddo. You know, I did. I I, I got some spots on Bist to know that I fished in the national championship, and I got spots on Caddo both. I, I honestly, I think I might just smash one lake one day and smash the other lake one day too. That's my plan. <clears throat> so yeah should be good man I, be good. I i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to do susquehanna i'd love to fish it but it's what? just like one of those things it's like it's it i don't know to me it's like pre-fishing is stupid because those fish aren't going to be there again <laughs> you know what i mean like honestly yeah. they're just not like it's 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 literally a coin flip it's all that is like who gets the lucky spot in my opinion you're not wrong so, on that one. Yeah, I don't know. It is. I well, mean, but it's you got, I, that, you got that check, and that dude. It's so great catching a, a 15 inch fish, and yeah, and watching it jump like eight times, like four feet in the air, like, like that's insane. <laughs> I hadn't done that since this morning. Well, well, Jason, man, we appreciate you taking the time after that long drive. Congrats again on the huge win. We'll let you slide out of here and wrap this thing up. Yeah. But, man, we, we certainly appreciate you. Cool, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me on. Yeah, congrats, man. Good luck the rest of the season. We'll, we'll catch you uh, probably again. Hopefully you're in that top five again. Maybe I'll have you and your dad on here at the same time one time. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, yeah, man. Buddy. Have a good night. All right. Yeah, you, you guys have a good one. All right. See you. Appreciate it. Jason Isaacs, everybody. Dude, I've had these earbuds laying here on this table the entire time. I put them back in their case, and then they started working. Really? <laughs> yeah, so now I have them in my ear. So if you want to start this whole show over, we can run that back. How about that? What we're going to do crazy. instead, Ryan, is do the Z-Man game. How about that? <laughs> I thought, no, that is not our hashtag. Jeff. It is. Oh, I knew you were going to do this. Should, to I, should I have done Octahole? Yes. I don't think there was enough people on when we mentioned what that was at the beginning. So they, have, they had to thought, we'd have probably turned us in. Oh, saying that. I, I'm so di I'm so disappointed. I, I had messages earlier today about don't forget about Octahole. I don't even know how to spell Octahole, right? We we make it up because it's a brand new term. Okay, that Steve O coined uh, as he does. <laughs> Jake Penny, Octaholi, <laughs> Octaholio, hey, Scoreholio. Yeah, hey, man. by the way, that Scoreholio app is legit. Like yeah, you can just search tournaments in any area and it'll show you what cornhole tournaments are there and stuff. I really like that feature. And I think for like traveling anglers, that might be cool to, uh, you know, to look into that if you're looking for some after hours entertainment. Yeah. That, that, uh, 
able to read your location like that. Pretty neat. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. Pretty cool. Let's do this uh, Z-Man giveaway, and we'll wrap this thing up tonight. Uh, John Allen said, are we watching the chosen one? We are not. It's the play-in tournament. They shouldn't even be in the playoffs. The play-in tournament, the NBA just – How do you have to get a play? How are you that trash that you have to play into the actual playoffs? I don't know. I don't like what they've done. The in-season tournament, the play-in tournament, it's just not what it used to be. Need to buy that boy a better team. Yeah, no. It was funny, Gator, the guy we talked about earlier, had LeBron James bags, and he had, was it the Lakers and and the Cavaliers on yeah. there? Yeah. But he I left off him. like his third team because he didn't like the Heat. Yeah. <laughs> it, they wouldn't fit, all his teams wouldn't fit on the bag. Yeah, when I was throwing with Gator, I was using the, the King bags is what he called them. Uh, Gator got clapped in the cornhole tournament, by the way, so don't that that should show your taste in basketball players. Gator <laughs> don't play that. Uh, that. Yeah, Gator didn't play cornhole, so <laughs> but he'd tell you how. I'll oh, give him man, credit was, on that. That's like yeah. it was a professor. Old Pappy here was was on the struggle bus a little bit on the cornhole boards, and he was trying to coach me up. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> listen, old man. Oh boy. I'd, I'd run that one back again. If we get back out there, if I could not have to drive like 26 hours plus, uh, I would just do that hangout weekend again. That was so much fun. Remember the old, do they still do the boondoggles? You remember that when they used to do the saltwater guys used to do boondoggles? I haven't seen one in a long time, but I do remember five, I don't know, probably six, seven years ago. That was a big thing. Can we do that again? Can, would people participate in a boondoggle? We just need to do a freaking KBN like hangout deal. Throw a cornhole tournament in there. I think we should set up like kayak races, an agility course, like you know, tug of war on kayaks. Like just do some crazy stuff. Yeah, have some cage fights. What, whatever, like brand versus brand. Kind hey, of cage fights would be legit. I'd yeah. say we'd have a lot of people signing up for that, or some people that probably thought they wanted to that wouldn't. Uh, once, yeah. the, <laughs> once the cage fight part came around. Yeah, that's right. KBN Friday Night Boondoggle. We, we've tried that, and there's usually a, a fair amount of folks that'll show up for a dinner or something like that, but I mean like a a full weekend of fun. Yeah, time. just hanging out. No pressure. Everybody's there to have, have fun. Yeah, leg wrestling. Come on, Mike. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, let's hit this giveaway. We're at an even 50. Here we go. Jousting on yaks. Yes, sir, Trevor. Yes, that would be awesome. Jousting. Now you're getting there. With poo noodles or something. Mike oh, Wimmer. Dude. Here's to you, the leg wrestling Mike Wimmer. I thought J-Mag took another one. Yeah. Tetherball uh, on the kayak. <laughs> How do we do that? <laughs> what do you say? That's the bully's favorite <laughs> playground sport right there. <laughs> oh. Mike Wimmer, hit us up in the DMs, man, or hit Ryan up. He can get you the... Yep, the, slide uh, me your slide info. me your shipping info and say Z Man Winner. That way I can keep track of it when I search my DMs for stuff I hadn't sent out yet. Yeah, that was a fun one, Ryan. Yep, I'm gonna eat this steak that's sitting here staring at me. So y'all have a uh, fantastic Tuesday. Sorry for the delay on this yeah. week's episode, but we made it. Tuesday, Tuesday, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see y'all next week. <laughs> Take care.